Hello everyone, I am Uday Dhatra. Today we will see how your website can be hacked by 5 ways. We know how to hack into a website in 40 plus ways and we know how to hack into a server by 100 plus ways. So let's quickly discuss about SQL injection. SQL injection can happen on database connection pages. SQL injection can be done on database connection pages like registration page, login page, forgot password page, profile edit page, change password page, password reset page and comments page. SQL injection can be done to steal the application code, can also create the files on the server, can read all the files on the server and also be used to steal all the passwords in the database and can log in as any user. So now I am trying to log in as admin user without knowing his password. Login. Admin. I am trying to enter the SQL code here and now I am logged in as admin user. Now I can create the users, delete the users or upload any file in the application. Let's move on to the next security issue. Local file inclusion. Local file inclusion can happen on local file handling pages. Local file inclusion can be done on file loading pages to steal the database, usernames, passwords and also can be used to steal the complete application logs. So here if you see the, the application is taking the parameter value as readme.txt and it's loading its contents. So now if I try to change the path to If I give the database path, it will read all the username and passwords and display here where admin is the username, xvw is the username and the password is the md5 hash we have to decode it and we can log in as them. And the next thing is we can read the complete application logs here. I am just giving the log file path and it has loaded all the complete web application logs here. Sometimes we can also see the session IDs here. We can trap, we can take the session ID and we can log in as that particular user. So local file inclusion can also be used to steal the application code. We can also inject the application in the code and execute code and comments on the server. Let's move on to the next issue, file upload. File upload can happen on remote file handling pages. So it can be used to upload a code and execute the code and comments on the server. So now I'll try to upload the code here, upload the file. Instead of uploading an image, I am trying to upload the PHP code. As soon as the file is uploaded successfully, I am trying to call that particular file with dir command. dir command is used to list the files on the server. I can see there is a config.php is there. So I will be trying type space config.php. Now I can see the database username passwords here. I can complete I can read the complete application code here and I got the username and it's not protected with password. I can connect to the database remotely here. Let's move on to the next issue cross-site request forgery. Here there is a page. Since we are not logged in, first we'll try to log in, log in as admin. Password 1234567. Now, since it's not asking the old username and password, so what happens if the victim clicks on this link, his password will be changed. Password changed successfully. So his password is changed now. So let's confirm it whether his password successfully changed or not. Yes. Let's move on to the next issue. So remote code execution can be happened on URL handling pages. Let's say there is a page which is taking the parameter value as URL, google.com, this particular page, website. So now the Google is loaded. So I'll try to give, upload the code in GitHub, PHP code, and I'll try to execute that code here. So now I'm passing the parameter value to my GitHub code. So that code will be executed on this particular server and you can see all the contents are listed here. Thank you guys. I'm just explaining five different critical security issues in two minutes. Thank you.